All right, today we're back with another kind of software that you could potentially use to write your book. And today we're gonna to talk about Notion. Hi, I'm Hananya Leclerc. I am a multi-genre writer who shares tips and tricks and talks about her life. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. I personally have used Notion a little bit for my so-called project planning or content calendar for my YouTube videos. And I figured this could also be something that people could use to plot out their book or even like write their book, stuff like that. I am not really sure how I'm gonna use it, if I'm gonna use it for writing my book, but I have been thinking about it. Just because Scrivener is a program that I love using and that is the one that I covered in a previous video. And that one is paid, so I also wanna give you guys some free options because Notion is currently free, at least the version that I use. And it is not only like a native app, but you can also use it kind of on a web browser, which makes it very easy to kind of use it along different platforms and like across different devices. So that is kind of why I enjoy using Notion a lot because even if I'm, for example, at my work laptop, I can quickly jot down a video idea if I have one and it will just be in my Notion once I get back home to my personal computer. So that's why I enjoy using Notion a lot as well. And I figured this could also be a way to kind of write your book, I guess. So I'm gonna show you how I currently have something set up for the book that I'm planning on writing for this little series and um, gonna show you what I have so far. So Notion is for me currently a app that I downloaded onto my MacBook. You can also access it from a web browser, as I mentioned. So different ways to do this. You don't have to download the app, but that is what I currently have. And there is like different kind of sections to this. I am not an expert on Notion. I really kind of downloaded a template online and just have been building on that from that moment forward. And I don't really have anything set up the way like personally that I've set it up but what you can do is basically it creates a hub kind of thing where you can have different folders so this is kind of how I see the binder of Scrivener if you've watched that video then these are kind of the different sections that you can use so this is currently kind of a template that I downloaded and you can even search for templates as well if you are unsure how to set this up or you can just create a page and it will just create an empty page like this and then you can just get started. So I have already kind of started a little bit here. So the template or like the thing that I use is just an empty page really. So if you have an empty page like this, that's what I'll be using. Mine is just kind of somewhere linked to a different project, but what you wanna do is just fill out a title and then probably just not have anything here at the moment. And I'm sure if you've are like someone who really loves Notion, you have like so much knowledge on this, then this is gonna be a very limited video for you because I really don't have a ton of information on Notion, but I'm just gonna show you a very simple way to use Notion for writing your book. So I currently have a title, which is Vampire Book Idea. Yes, I know I don't have a better title for my projects. I always struggle with finding titles for my projects and stuff like that. So currently don't have that. This is information because it's kind of linked to something else, like a different section. So that's why this is in there. You don't need it. You don't have to have this. Um, it probably won't show up once you start creating a separate page and this is kind of the additional information. You don't need it. We can just ignore that bit. So the section here is basically where you start your document. So your document will be kind of blank. So it will just be tons of space that you can start using. And the way that this kind of works is you have different lines and it says press a space for AI or a kind of slash for any commands. So if you do a slash, you can get kind of a drop down of what you want it to be. So you can just do basic text or you can do a page, a to-do list, if you have certain things like that. Um, what I like to do is do a heading or even better, a toggle heading. So the way that I kind of do it is toggle and then if you do that, then you get the headings as well. So I use a toggle heading and then just call this like book maybe or whatever you want to do. 
and then that becomes kind of a collapsible thing which I enjoy because then I don't have to have all of this open all the time and I can collapse it whenever I am not working on that specific section so that's what I enjoy using you kind of get to do what you want in this but that kind of helps me keep the overview of certain sections in this kind of notion document so if we're looking at, for example, book one and we move all of this, which I already have set up is chapter one, chapter two, etc., then that will become like more clear. So what you can do if you have Notion like this is you can select stuff by just kind of clicking and dragging and then it will highlight the stuff that you've selected. Um, if you don't have anything, you can just kind of keep going. You can do it in the toggle menu. So then this would become like, maybe you do like chapter one like that and then you do chapter two. Um, and now it's just kind of plain text, but if you want it to become like a page, you can say turn it into a page and put it there. Or you can even do turn it into um, a toggle list again. So you can do a toggle list in a toggle list um, and then maybe do this as like heading through two. And then this can also become a heading if I want to do that. So then I go into turn into and then say heading three. Now, as you can see, this is currently saying that this is all underneath each other, but that's not what I want. I want chapter two to be on the same level as chapter one. So I just kind of drop it in here. Now you might think, well, that's not what I wanted because I want chapter one be above chapter two. You can just move around. You can just drag and drop kind of when you see these little dots, that's when you can drag and drop um, kind of anywhere you want it to be. You can move it outside of book one, you can do it into chapter one, you can do it underneath chapter one, underneath chapter two, like kind of really depends on where you want this to be. If I collapse book one, as you see I have just done, then it just kind of limits what I see and I enjoy that because then I don't have to worry about that specific section. If you want to delete it, it's also very easy um, to delete certain things. Just kind of backspace it. Um, select it and backspace it as well and it's just gone. Um, this is a, a page so that just means it opens a separate kind of document if you will if I click on it so you can see that this is a different blank sheet um, and that's kind of where I wanted to put the information I have in Scrivener already so that I can have it all in one place and then I have some general information which is just the characters and who they are what their name is etc and then I have the beat sheet I was going to put in here as well which I haven't done but that is just kind of as an outline for myself to see what I was planning on doing and then that way I can reference it but collapse it once I don't need it so I can just kind of open and close it. And that's what I like with the toggles. So that I've set up kind of a chapter 1, chapter 2 and then chapter X as a way of kind of starting to write this. So chapter 1 if I then uncollapse it I can start typing in this and this can be kind of my document once I start using this. So then this is my first chapter and this is what I to write about, like stuff like that. Um, if I then collapse it, it's all neat and I don't have to see the heaps and heaps of text that are gonna be um, in here. If I, for example, grab maybe the original Scrivener stuff that I have for this, I don't know, I'm gonna have to grab it. So I can grab it from the idea shelf because that's where it's currently at. But if I, for example, grab all of this, which is um, 4,000 words. I don't necessarily want to see that all um, in here. So I'm just going to paste it underneath chapter two, maybe. Um, as you can see, this is a lot. So once you start getting into this and you're like, okay, well, cool, but I want to go back and um, just, you know, work on something else or whatever, then you can collapse this and it just becomes invisible, right? It, it's still there it's just collapsed and that's what I enjoy a lot so that I don't have to see all of it and scroll down a lot. I can just kind of toggle it back and forth like this. And the why I've set up chapter X is because you can duplicate these. So I will just kind of duplicate it and then call this chapter three and then do it from Jackson's point of view. And that's kind of what I enjoy because it's kind of a quote unquote template that you can use for um, creating these kind of toggle lists. So that is a way that I am potentially thinking about starting to write this book, just because I might want to be able to do this from different kind of locations and Scrivener I do have on my phone as well, but sometimes it's just easier to do it on a desktop, even when I'm like on my work laptop, for example. So yeah, I feel like that was a very, very quick 
introduction to Notion. Notion has so much more to offer. There's probably a lot of different things that you could use. Maybe you can use it as a timeline if that's what you want to do because there's definitely like a lot of options in Notion and it's very open into kind of building your own kind of thing. I'm sure there's plenty of templates out there as well if you're looking for something that's a little bit more than just this very very kind of basic thing. But this is probably how I would use it if I wanted to get into it for now just because I don't really know any templates at the moment and I'm not really looking for them either but if I wanted to start using this kind of tomorrow this is what I would do just to kind of have a very quick way of having everything kind of organized and easy to access for me. Um, you could even potentially create different pages for different um, chapters if that is something that you would rather do and do it that way. Uh, it's really up to you on how you want to set this up or how you want to approach this but these are kind of the things that I would personally use and what I would personally kind of say I was gonna be able to do with this so yeah a very very quick video on uh, on Notion and how you could potentially use this for writing I know there's probably other um, more extensive videos out there that are going to talk about Notion in much more detail but this is just kind of a quick little overview of the potential it has for just simple word processing and not necessarily all the big bells and stuff that Notion can do but this is very basic. This is what you could do if you just want to start writing in a very quick and easy way um, in Notion. So. With that being said, um, I hope this video has been helpful for you and if you are starting to use Notion for writing, please let me know down below because I would love to know if someone is using this for their writing and if you are using templates or if you have better information, more information on Notion concerning writing a book, then also let me know because I'd love to find out more information on this. I'm sure I could find some if I research a little bit more, but this is currently what I have and how I would use it. Let me know down below what your favorite writing software is that you're using and um, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!